Hey there, let's go ahead and talk about viewport frames, which is a unique frame you can use to render 3D objects onto a 2D surface. It's actually quite simple to work with viewport frames and you can create a lot of stuff with them, such as creating mirrors in your game. You can use them to create mini maps or you can even use them to take a snapshot or picture of something. In the Roblox documentation, it reads that a viewport frame is a type of GUI object that can render 3D objects inside of its bounds. This is a great way to display 3D objects slash models in a 2D GUI space like a screen GUI. At the moment, no shadow or post effects are available. Neon and glass materials will be rendered on lowest quality. Nested GUIs aren't supported, which means GUI objects don't work as expected under viewport frames. So let's go ahead and use viewport frames to take a snapshot of the player's character. So I have this model right here and inside of it, I have the part which I'm going to be placing a surface UI on it and we're going to be using the viewport frame on that. And then I have this other part right here and it's going to detect any other parts inside of it and we're going to display those parts onto our viewport frame. And in order to do that, I have an attachment with a proximity prompt in it to trigger this system. So let's go ahead and create a new surface GUI and start a GUI. And I'm going to set the Adorni equal to my image part. And then we can go ahead and add a viewport frame. And I'm going to make sure that this is set to scale. So that way it goes across the entire surface of my part. And now let's go ahead and add a local script inside of here. Inside of the script, we'll make a reference to our GUI script.parent. And then in order for the viewport frame to work, we need to give it a camera instance. So let's go ahead and create a new camera. I'll call this my viewport camera. We're going to set it equal to instance.new camera. And I'm going to update the C frame of this camera to be equal to the part that my GUI is being displayed on. So we'll refer to the GUI and get the Adorni and then we'll get the C frame of that part. So what that's going to do is it's going to create a camera in the center of this part looking towards wherever this part is facing. So if we go ahead and select this part and show the orientation indicator, the camera is going to be looking this way. So you can imagine a camera inside of the part looking this direction. So that's going to be the camera that will display stuff on the viewport frame. And I'm going to adjust some other settings in my camera, like I'll increase the field of view to 80. And then inside of my GUI, and if we grab the viewport frame, the viewport frame has a property called current camera, and it says camera that is used to render children objects. So we need to set this property equal to the camera we just created. Then I'm also going to make a reference to our little detect zone part. I'll just call it detect zone. And that's going to be equal to my GUI, get the Adorni, get its parent. And then inside of that model, we should be able to grab the detect zone. And then I'm going to type annotate this as a base part. And then we also want to grab the prompt. And that's going to be equal to GUI.Adorni. Get my attachment and inside of that attachment will be my proximity prompt. Then what we can go ahead and do is listen for when my prompt is triggered. And we want to go ahead and take a snapshot of any parts that are inside or that are colliding with this detect zone right here. Because what we need to do is any parts inside of the zone, we need to copy it and then make it a child of the viewport frame. That's how we render stuff in the viewport frame. We have to make it a child of the viewport frame. So when our prompt is triggered, what we should go ahead and do is we should try to get all of the parts that are inside of our detect zone. And an easy way to do that is to use a function in the workspace called get part bounds in box. We pass a C frame, which represents the position and orientation of a box and then the size of the box. And that's simply just going to be equal to our detect zone dot C frame and then our detect zone dot size. Then this will return to us an array of all of the parts that are inside of that zone. So we can go ahead and loop through every single part inside of that array and make a clone of it. So we'll make a clone equal to part clone. And then we'll just set the parent of this part equal to our viewport frame. So we'll refer to our GUI and get our viewport frame. And now this will display all of the elements that are in front of the camera. Now, since any parts inside of this zone is going to be in front of this camera, since it's looking this way, it's going to render on our viewport frame. However, what you'll notice is that they will be frozen in the air. So even if you had an unanchored part in the workspace that was falling, 
and let's say you cloned it at its current position and then put it in the viewport frame, it's no longer going to fall because it's not a child of the workspace. It's not going to have physics acting upon it. If you wanted physics to still be acting upon any parts that are in a viewport frame, then instead of making your parts a child of the viewport frame, you would have to put something in here called a world model, which is basically another workspace. And inside of that world model, you can place all of your parts and then they'll have physics and that kind of stuff acting on them. But we're not going to do that for now. We're just going to make our parts a child of the viewport frame. And that's it. So what I'm going to do to make sure that my proximity prompt doesn't get triggered more than once, I'll make a debounce and then we'll check if the debounce is set to true. If it is, we'll return. Otherwise, we'll set it equal to true. And then I'm also going to make sure to disable my prompt and then to clean up any other previous parts that might be inside of our viewport frame, we can refer to our viewport frame and clear all of the children in there. And then after we take a picture, we can go ahead and re-enable the prompt and set debounce back to false. And then I wanna give my player some time to do like a pose. So before we clone all of the parts and place it in the viewport frame, let's yield here for like three seconds. So if I go and play my game, all right, let's go interact with our viewport frame. If I trigger the prompt, it should take a snapshot of my character. So let's go ahead and see what happens. And there we go. There is my character and also rendered in the base plate as well because the base plate is touching that detect zone. So there's my character standing on the base plate and that's pretty cool. Now, of course, nothing else outside of this zone or anything that's not touching this invisible zone here is going to be rendered in the viewport frame. So you don't see any of this other stuff behind me. If you wanted to see other stuff in your game, let's say you wanted to see the entire workspace, well, then you would actually have to clone the entire workspace and put it in the viewport frame, which I don't recommend that can cause some performance issues. But let's say you wanted to add a background. Maybe you want to have like a camera booth system and the players are able to independently change the background. Well, we can do that easily. One way we could do it is we could create a new part here. Where's my part? Here it is. Let me anchor this. And then on this part, let's go ahead and put like a decal. So we'll just put our backdrop here and then let's go ahead and open up the toolbox. And I found an image like this one, which is called clouds. I'll copy that asset ID and then we'll put a decal inside of our part and place that texture on it. And then let's swap the face, I believe, to back. There we go. And then we'll make sure to actually place this part inside of this invisible box. Otherwise, it won't be placed inside of the viewport frame. And then let's go ahead and try it out. So now if I go and interact and I do my little pose, let's see what happens. There we go. Look at that. We got our background rendered in our viewport frame. Very cool. Now, another way we could do this without having to use another part is we could actually put another image inside of the GUI or we could put a decal on the surface of this part. And then we could set the background transparency property inside of our viewport frame. So let me go ahead and open up my player, go to that surface GUI. We can adjust the background transparency so that way there's nothing in the background and then we'll be able to see anything that's beneath this viewport frame which could be another image or a decal on this part so let's go ahead and take a look at that if i decide to remove this decal and instead i want to make it a child of my image part and then let me go ahead and swap the face to be on the front right now you can't see it because our viewport frames background transparency is set to zero, but if we set it to one, then you can see it. So let's go ahead and play test the game. And then let's interact, get our little snapshot of our character. As you can see, it caught my pose as well, which is pretty cool. And then let's go ahead and open up for the Surface GUI. And then here's our viewport frame. If we go ahead and manipulate the background transparency and set it to be transparent, Look at that. Now you can see anything that is behind our viewport frame because we removed the background. And since this is a frame, you can manipulate any of the other properties inside of it. Maybe you actually want to have a different background color. You can go ahead and change that. And then there's some other additional properties for the viewport frame, such as ambient, light color, and light direction. So for ambient, 
we're able to change the lighting hue inside of our viewport frame. So if I wanna make it brighter, I can make it brighter. Or if I wanna make it darker, I can make it darker as well. This is very similar to the ambient property in the lighting service. And then we're also able to change the color of the light. So for example, maybe I want the light that's hitting my character to be a different color. Well, I can go ahead and change that. And then we can also change the position of that light as well. Let me go ahead and make it like, what color should I make it? We'll make it a red. And then we're able to manipulate the direction of the light. For example, if I swap X to be one instead, now we've moved the light over to the other side and we can just go ahead and mess around with these values. If I set all of these values to one, now the light's going to be hitting from behind me. And if I swap it back to all negative ones, now the light is hitting me from this direction. And since it's able to capture my pose, if I go ahead and interact with this again, and then let's do a waving pose. Oh, well, it kind of caught it. Let's go ahead and try that again. We'll wave. There we go, it caught my wave. There I am waving, and there's my nice little picture. All right, that's all for me for this video. Viewport frames are not that complicated. It's simply just adjusting the position and rotation of a camera for the viewport frame, and then placing any parts as children of the viewport frame in order to render them on, let's say, a Surface GUI or a Screen GUI. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.